This video is proudly sponsored by DistroKid. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Wiring the Studio. In our first video, I talked about how I get sound from the console into the computer and my entire signal flow from live room to the computer. In this video, I wanna talk about using the console as a mixing tool, how I get sound out of the computer through the I.O., out to the console, and then how I print back in. That is a question I get a lot, so I wanna cover what my setup is here and then give you some ideas on what you could use at home to have a similar setup or maybe even a summing mixer or something like that. Because in reality, setting this stuff up, at least the basic setups, isn't really that different. So we're gonna cover some different ways that you may be able to use this at home. Because the ultimate goal here is to get your music recorded, mixed, and out to the world. And speaking of getting music out to the world, I am proud to say that DistroKid is a sponsor of this video. We started using DistroKid last year for our online distribution, and I can say we will never look back. The process was so easy and extremely affordable. I mean, it's $19.99 a year for unlimited uploads. You know how many songs you have to write to fill unlimited? Trick question. They'll get you out to all the majors, Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, Tidal, Pandora, plus the newcomers that are making waves like TikTok. You get to keep 100% of the profits. Plus, you can set up splits in your account to automatically pay band members as money comes in. I mean, how cool is that? They're really making your life easy. They'll help you get paid when people use your music on YouTube, get your instant Spotify verified checkmark, manage your Apple Music page, and one of my favorites, get your credits and lyrics out to all the stores. And that's just a few of the cool features that you get with DistroKid. Now, it's only $19.99 a year, but if you use the code below, you can save an extra 7%. Tell them Charlie sent you. It's such a good service that most of the artists that I work with here at the studio use DistroKid for their online distribution, and I think you should too. Now let's go back to getting your studio wired up so you can finish those mixes and get some music out. So my setup for mixing is kind of similar to my setup for recording in the fact that I have things wired to go one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, and on down the line. So if I'm tracking, Remember, if I patch into a mic into channel one in the live room, it comes in, goes through the patch bay channel one, comes to the console channel one, goes out channel one, into my Mo2 channel one, and into the computer channel one. Two's the same, three's the same. That way it's efficient. I don't have to patch if I don't want to, if I'm not doing anything fancy. My, to get out, my setup is exactly like that. So in Logic, I'm gonna set up an output on channel one, that's going to go out my Mo2 on channel one, which is then going to go to the back of the Trident, which is going to come in the monitor input channel one and show up over here on channel one. Now it's coming in the monitor input and I have two different ways to get sound into this console, but I have my monitors hardwired through the patch bay to channel one. And then if, when I go to mix, I have to do a fader flip up here at the top and it moves my monitors down here to the faders. No patching though, still just one to one. I can do whatever I want out here on the board, have all the fun using all the outboard gear and whatnot. Goes to my master channel on the Trident, goes out of the master channel into my Apogee, Rosetta 200, which is my print chain. And then that goes into the computer via Firewire, because it's old, but it sounds really good, so I still use it. The Apogee is always channel 41, 42 with me. It's the last two. I have 40 ins and outs with the Motus, and then my print chain is 41, 42. So, quick recap. Comes out of Logic, channel one. Goes channel one on the board, monitor. I flip it to the fader, whatever. Do whatever I want here. Goes out of the master of the Trident, which goes to the Apogee, which then goes into the computer. Now, to monitor that, I have my two track set up to come out 4142, and this is actually in the patch bay. That's my extra step is the patch bay, which we'll get to that whole setup in just a second. But I do have the, the Apogee, output of the Apogee, which is 4142, in the patch bay, normal down to 
my two track here so I do not have to patch to monitor. All I have to do is set the output in Logic, the channel that I'm recording my mix back into, set that output to 4142. I hit this yellow button right here and I'm listening to what I'm printing. No patching if I don't want to. Well, there is a little. I'll get to that right now. So my setup adds the patch bay in the middle getting out and also getting back in. So my typical setup would be this. I set my channels up in Logic, one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, all the way up to 40 if I need it. That comes out here to the console. One shows up on one, two shows up on two, and so on. I do all my fun, whatever I wanna do. That goes to my master channel here on the Trident. Now this goes out to the patch bay. So I, I take some patch cables, I patch from the master outs into my two bus chain, which is my Smart Research C1 and AMS Neve 8803EQ. That gets patched, and those are hardwired together. So there's, if I patch into the compressor, the EQ is always following it. They're not separate in the patch bay. So that, it comes out of that EQ, I patch into the Apogee. That goes into the computer via Firewire and shows up, I set that to channel 4142. That's my print track, printing my mix. To monitor that mix, I set that print track outputs to 4142. That's in the patch bay, normal down to my two track right here. So I do not have to patch that. So the only patch cables I really have in my print chain anyway, is to get from the master outputs here into my two bus compression and EQ out of that two bus compression EQ and into the Apogee. So it's four patch cables. Nice and simple, easy routing. And I don't use the insert on my master channel. I use this basically as a throw into the compressor so I can kind of control what it's doing as opposed to having it on the insert here and then if I don't like how much compression I'm getting or want more, I have to start adjusting everything. That's just how I like to do it. I'm sure I stole that idea from somebody, <laughs> but it works. So that's my setup in a nutshell. Now, how can you use this at home? A few ways. First off, maybe you have a console or a mixer of some sort and you wanna utilize that for mixing. Maybe it's some EQs on there. Maybe you have some other outboard effects or compressors or things like that and you would like to get it out in the analog domain to use those. So you could set things up on your aux sends. Maybe you have inserts on your channels that you could you know, send your kick drum out and plug in your favorite new compressor that you just got to make it sound killer, that sort of thing. And then route everything back in. The first thing you wanna consider is what is your IO and how many channels do you have? If you wanna do a full mix or if you want you know, more than just a couple tracks, you're gonna need at least probably 16 or more almost like a summing mixer really, because a lot of summing mixers are 16 channels. And for good reason, because a lot of times eight stereo groups is perfect for getting some out of the box summing. And if you need more, a lot of times you can link them. So there's, you've got to consider your connections in and out. For instance, let's look at a couple things here real quick. First off, really common on a lot of the budget IOs is to have mic line inputs or combi jacks, so they're XLR and TRS, which is great because you have some mic pre's to use if you don't have any outboard mic pre's, but you also have direct ins. You could plug your bass or guitar direct to do some stuff, keyboards, that sort of thing. You could also use those as print tracks coming off something analog or to get in and out to maybe a master bus chain or something like that. However, if you have something like, take a look at this Motu, 8M right here where it has eight mic line inputs, which are the combi jacks, and then it has eight TRS line outs. If you're gonna have a setup like that, you're not gonna be able to go, you're not gonna be able to leave it wired in and out. Like if I wanted to wire a, you say you had a small mixer, you couldn't have, you could not keep your inputs wired if you're gonna use the mic pre's on that unit as well. You would have to get in the back and either plug in for the mic pre or plug in for the line input. That may not be a big deal if you're just summing, because with a unit like this, it's only eight channels, but that gives you four stereo groups. You know, you could have a stereo drums, stereo guitar, 
maybe stereo vocals, maybe a mono bass or something like that. And you could send it out those line outputs. And if you're summing, you only need to, two tracks to print back in. For instance, if I'm on the board, say I wanted to use this as a summing mixer, right? So I have 24 channels, so say, say I fill them all up and they all come to this two track, right? I could print that two track back in. That means I need 24 outputs to get out to the board, but I only need two outputs to get from the board back into the computer, just like a summing mixer. And that makes the requirement of your in and out a little bit easier. If you're not going to use the mic pre's on your I.O., I recommend looking at something that is just analog ins and outs, if you're going to use a console or a summing mixer anyway. Something like, you know, my 24 I.O. here is that way, it's just in and out. The same thing with, um, like, Personas has some new stuff that is just that way, that's DB25, and that's the other thing, you got to think about your connections too, because you're going to have to buy a lot of cables. And do not underestimate how much cables can cost. If you have the ability to solder, I highly recommend making your own. You can get high quality cable, Megami, Belden, any of the good stuff, buy Neutrik ends, source all that stuff for a lot less than you'll pay for actual cables. It will take a little bit of time, but can save you a lot of money in the long run. So you kind of have to think what your application is. Are you analog mixing, like I do, although it is kind of a hybrid setup, but I like to get a lot of things out here and do it here and then print through my two bus chain, or are you just going to do, you want strict summing? If it's strict summing, your input requirements are less than your output requirements of your I.O. So just really try to consider what you want to do and then find the best gear, in your price range, your budget, whatever, to make that happen. There's nothing worse than getting some gear and go, oh man, I got my I.O. and I want to run some stuff out to the board and realize that you have a two in, two out I.O. and now there's nothing you can, not much you can do with that. So think about that first. Think about what your goals are, if it's a console, if it's a summing mixer, something like that. So you make sure to get the best thing for you. Personally, I really like getting stuff out here on the console. And those reasons being, I like my hands to be on moving something that isn't, you know, a mouse. And I know there's controllers for the computer and stuff like that too, which I will get at one point. But there's something just for me, yeah, just the connection to the music when I'm either turning a knob or moving a fader or something like that. I just feel it more. And to be quite honest with you, it's just a ton of fun for me. And if this isn't fun, why are we doing it? There's a lot of other ways to, and a lot of easier ways to make money. So this should be fun. So whatever your workflow is, you better be having fun. And if you're not, find another workflow. For me, it's coming out here. Okay, if I have to do a recall, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Who cares? I'm making music. I'm having fun. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. So anyway, that's my setup. That's some ways that you could use it at home. You know, just think of your I.O. Think of what you want your workflow to be ultimately. Do you want to go through the hassle of having a console, which I obviously do, or do you want something that's a little bit slimlined like a summing mixer or something like that? Either way you go, you can't go wrong. There's a lot of great gear out there. So the best thing you can do is go mix. Go make some music, get it out to the world. Big thanks to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. And I hope you guys have a fantastic time recording. See you around.